So today we're going to be changing the lenses that we use when we view students. So instead of using that behavior management lens, let's try on some problem solving lenses. Now, if you are like me, you probably grew up hearing things like, you know, if that kid wanted to behave, he could really do it. Or, you know, I think she's just trying to get attention from us. Or maybe as a parent, have you just wished that teachers would stop that behavior management business and instead get into the problem solving business? So if these resonate with you, this is the place to be because we're gonna be talking about Ross Green's model today. If you are a fan of Ross Green, you know he has this wonderful way of viewing students in their challenging behavior that often is not accepted and practiced that much in homes or in schools. So I'm hoping today that I can whet your appetite. I am, my disclaimer is I'm not a trained um, person for Ross Green's model, but I do want you to be interested in it and hopefully check out some of his trainings and workshops that he has on his website. And we can show that in a little bit. But I want to welcome you. I'm excited that you're here. I'm Charmaine Tanner. I host this weekly Facebook Live show called The Art of Advocacy every Thursday. And I even have a book called <laughs> The Art of Advocacy that you can get on Amazon if you'd like. So the other thing that I have for you is each time after the show, I do a, um, I'm calling it show notes, where I talk about the key takeaways in our show and give you the timestamps so you can easily find those. I give you quotes from the show, additional resources. So if you are interested in doing that or getting that, let me type in the word here. All you have to do is type in the word proactive and my IEP bot will send you those show notes. So um, just type in the word proactive and you'll get the show notes. Now, I was first introduced to Ross Green by another parent in Colorado. So Casey, if you're watching, thank you so much for introducing me to Ross Green's philosophy and his values about students, which I think are so much more positive than what we typically do. Now, I know when I was growing up, you know, I heard things like, oh, you know, she's such a brat. She's just trying to get attention with what she's doing. All of those kind of negative messages. But then when I was in college, one of the things that I learned was to look at the function of the behavior. Well, we were still pretty much looking at things like, you know, are, is a student trying to get attention? Are they trying to avoid or escape a task? Or are they trying to get some object or activity that they love to do? But, you know, even looking at that, from that lens of a function of, of behavior, we're really still doing a disservice to our kids. So I'd love for you to pop in and ask questions in the comments, give feedback, give examples that you've experienced as far as the difference between behavior management and problem solving, because when we're more interactive on the show, it makes it a lot more fun for everybody. So we've got lots of people here. Irma is here and I can show her comment. Um, Marlo is here from Pennsylvania. Ruth says, fabulous, can't wait. So we will start diving into, let me take this down, some of our content. What I would like you to do is, 
if you have used Ross Green's collaborative proactive solutions in your house while you're, you know, <laughs> helping your kids and supporting them, if you could put that in the comments, or if you're, if any of your kids' teachers are using Ross Green's collaborative proactive solutions model, can you type that in the comments? Because I think that would be awesome to see if we're actually starting to use this right around the country. The other thing is, if you're familiar with Ross Green, you probably know he has this famous mantra or quote that um, he uses all the time. So if you're familiar with Ross Green or you want to take a guess, <laughs> what do you think his number one thing is that he wants us to remember about when we're working with kids with challenging behavior? So I'll give you a second there to type in what you think Ross Green's famous quote is. And I will also pull it up here. So he, Ross Green is always saying, kids do well if they can. And that's the kind of philosophy and values that I'm hoping that we all embrace. Um, because when our kids show us challenging behavior, our job as adults is to identify those unresolved problems that are causing the behavior and collaboratively with the child, with the student, try to figure out how we're going to solve those problems. Now, his um, Ross Green's model has three different steps. So let me show you what those are here. As I said before, the name of his process is Collaborative and um, Proactive Solutions. And the three parts are one, to change our lenses, two, to identify the lagging problems and the unresolved problems that the student has. And then the, th oops, I keep going too far ahead. <laughs> and then the third step is to um, actually solve the problem, right? That makes sense. So today what we're going to be talking about is we're going to be talking that, about that first step of how we change the lens of how we view students. Um, because what happens is when we come from that behavior management, you know, viewpoint, or we use that behavior management lens, what we're doing then is saying what I do as an adult, when I see kids with this challenging behavior, when I think, you know, if they just wanted to do better, they could. Then what I do is I set up reward systems. I have prize boxes in my classroom. Kids get points for doing things. Or at home, you know, it might be they earn the privilege of screen time and using an iPad or at school when it gets to the extreme negative kinds of behavior management, we have kids that are being restrained, secluded, excluded. Um, and so those kinds of ways that we react to challenging behavior have shown us that it really can be detrimental and more harmful for kids if that's how we react to their behavior. So let me look down here because I want to make sure we see everybody. Hey, Lisa, Lisa is here. Yes, and Irma knows um, children do better when they can do well. And Terry says the same. She says children do well when they can. And that just makes a huge difference. Um, and Dinah is with us from Washington, and she says she loves Ross Green, love collaborative problem solving, would love to be an accredited trainer. I know, I know, I know, Dinah. When I look at that, it's like, ooh, is this like one more thing I could do? Because, um, you know, from a personal standpoint, I've got four grandkids now, so I think those kinds of things are really um, useful <laughs> when I'm with my grandkids. As parents, it's like excellent. And then for teachers, it's like, ah, this would be so great. Um, this would be a wonderful um, 
district-wide goal. If you talk to district administrators about what their goals are for professional development in your school district, or talk to your principal about what some goals are for professional development for the upcoming year, if they can vote for the collaborative proactive solution model, that would be so helpful for so many kids. So that's what I'm really hoping for, that um, we can start changing things and looking at our kids, like I said, in a different viewpoint. So, you know, he talks, Ross Green talks about, you know, kids do well if they can. And unfortunately, so many times what we see is people thinking that kids can only do it if they want to do it. And that's the reason why they're having problems. So these are some of the things that when I grew up, I remember hearing, um, I've said similar things to this. You know, you might have heard that kid is such a motor mouth. Um, stay away from him. He's no good. She's just a brat. And then as a teacher, I've said to confession some of these, or I've heard teachers say, you know, he's always a class clown. He's just trying to get any kind of attention he can. Or you might have heard, he pretends not to understand the directions, just so he doesn't have to do the work. Or you might have heard teachers whispering in the teacher's lounge, if the parents would just do their job, we wouldn't have these problems. So let me know, what are some of the common statements maybe that you've heard when people are coming from that um, behavior management viewpoint so if, you, oop, you know what, I think I wasn't, was I like not even sharing those? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so, yes. And like I said, the problem is that what we have seen from research is that the behavior management strategies really don't work. They don't resolve those underlying problems. Um, and we need to recognize that our philosophy and how we view kids will determine the actions that we take. So again, if we're coming from that behavior management side, we're gonna reward kids for doing what they do when we ask them to do it, right? We love compliance if we come from that behavior management viewpoint. And if you contrast that to the collaborative problem solving kind of viewpoint, then what we do as adults is we try to figure out what are those skills that the child is lacking? Are they having a hard time, you know, regulating their senses in this kind of environment? What kinds of skills are they lacking? And that's what I should be doing as a teacher or a parent to support and help the child learn those kinds of skills. So it just really changes the tone. It changes the, you know, the motivation for kids to want to even go to school when they have teachers that understand them, when they have teachers that don't, you know, put compliance as the number one goal for behavior in their classroom. But they really look at your kids as individuals and they really look at what are some things that we can do to support this child. So, like I said, if you've had different experiences, um, with teachers in the classroom. If you want to give examples, we can go through those examples and kind of pull out some things <laughs> that would be helpful. Um, or as a parent, if you remember maybe what you grew up hearing and how you transfer that to your own child. So any of those kinds of things would be awesome for you to share with us. The other thing that I wanted to talk about was, you know, at the beginning of the show, we said, you know, Ross Green's one of his famous um, quotes is, if kids can do well, they will. Um, 
And then let's contrast that, and I'll hopefully be showing this now, <laughs> to the teachers and the parents that um, instead of having that kids do well if they can, they have that philosophy that kids do well if they want to. And Ross Green has some great videos on his website, and he talks about, you know, if you're coming from that place where you think, you know, the kid has control over their behavior, they're just trying to be obnoxious, they're trying to get on my nerves, then that is going to cause us to um, stay in that behavior management kind of box that many teachers when they went to college, that's what they grew up with. That's what they were taught, right? So one of the quotes that I love from Ross Green, he says, so long as caregivers are solely focused on modifying a child's behavior, the problems that are causing that behavior will remain unresolved. But when caretakers focus instead on solving the problems, collaboratively and proactively, not only do the problems get solved, the challenging behaviors that are associated with those problems subside. So this is my hope, is that we will, you know, kind of forge ahead <laughs> and have a different generation of teachers that are looking at kids in a different way. Um, not only seeing kids as competent as learners, but also knowing that when they, when the students are showing us those challenging behaviors, there's something underneath that. They are lagging in some skills. So next Thursday, we are going to talk about step two, which is how do we identify which lagging skills our kids or our students have? And how can we also identify some of those underlying problem kinds of behaviors that they, they just don't have another way of handling or resolving? Um, and so instead of that medical model of blaming the kid, and the kid is one, the one that has to change, we as adults have to look at what can we do differently to support kids um, and start using that problem solving lens when we look at challenging behavior. So let me see if you guys have any other questions or comments um, because I think, you know, when we can interact, then, <laughs> then it helps us even more. And then the other thing is, if you can give us, you know, examples or situations of what you're dealing with or what teachers are telling you, then we can use that as our real life example and help, you know, brainstorm some ideas for you. Um, like I said, I do show notes at the end. I'll be sending those out next Tuesday they have key takeaways and the timestamps so you can find the key takeaways easily. They have um, quotes from our show and also additional resources. So the other thing that I wanted to do was to bring up Ross Green's website. So let me share that with you because he just has like a ton of free resources on his website. So if you haven't been there, I really encourage you to go. The website is called Lives in Balance. And let me see if I can move this. Lives in the Balance. So I got to make sure that I bring it up so you can see it. <laughs> da, 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 da. Solo. So this is his website. And what I like about it, it's it's got videos on it. It has, you know, short articles. It has podcasts. They talk about the different trainings and workshops that they have coming up. So the other thing is that he's broken it down to um, resources for parents and children. 
and you can go through there. There's all kinds of, the walking tours is kind of a starting point where you can go and learn more. He used to call the model collaborative problem solving. And then a few years ago, he changed it to um, collaborative proactive solutions, but it's still known as at CPS. If you want to help your teacher at school be able to get some resources, you can go to the educators um, website and he, again, he just has some cool things. The other thing I'm going to try and show later on another show is this new lens changer app. And this is really pretty cool. And like I said, we'll try and um, I'll go through the steps of how you use that app, but you might want to check it out now. And like I said, as a parent, it's like gold as far as, you know, what we can use with our own kids. Um, so I would encourage you to go there. And then advocacy is another tab on here. He has this bill of rights, which is like so excellent. So this is something else that you could print off and you could um, share with, you know, teachers or staff at school as far as a bill of rights for behaviorally challenged kids. Um, and it just takes that switch of mindset and that will make such a huge difference with what happens to your child at school, um, how comfortable and safe they feel. It also helps parents directly at, um, you know, in the, in their house. And then in the innovation tab on his website, they talk, um, some more about some different resources. He also has a couple different um, Facebook groups that you can go and belong to. So I would encourage you between now and maybe next Thursday, go to his website, Lives in the Balance, and check out some of those resources. And to know that today we talked about that step of changing our lens changing how we view kids. Next Thursday, we'll be talking about how to identify those lagging skills. And then the following Thursday, we'll do step three, which is how do we solve those problems? How do we help kids learn those lagging skills that they have? So until next Thursday, I hope you have a wonderful end to your week. And we shall see you back here next Thursday at noon Mountain Time. Take care. <laughs> it says in broadcast. <laughs> Let's see if we can end it. Here we go.